Firstly, I'd like to say thank you for all the comments. Um, truly appreciated for for even taking the time of you know, listening to some of this this ongoing story of stuff. They tell me it's a it's a Friday. <laughs> they tell me it's my granddaughter's um, uh, 18th birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Angel. Um, I know this to be true because my mind keeps uh, informing me. And the information keeps itself ticking away, you know, that mind ticking away. Uh, they tell me my name, they tell me all these things. They, the mind, they, the information, whatever it is, you know. But um, one of the things you learn from this really uh, exceptional awakening is you, you accept everything you see. You don't make a fuss. You don't make a fuss about the words and the names and the the stuff you know the drama you know I find it hard to watch the soaps because it's not that I I know they're fake it's just that they repeat the same old stuff you know and some days we need something new and awakening and enlightenment is, is just something new you know, something refreshing. You understand life in its simplest terms. You understand that there appears to be a non-you. But we have to put up with that, you see. We have to put up this. I, when I say when you have to put up with it, you, it's not a, a chore. It's a blessing. It's a blessing because you know that without this body you would not have experienced God. You would not have experienced that moment. I heard a quote this morning on, I think, one of the social media sites from Ramdas saying, May all beings be free from suffering. May all beings be happy. May all beings aspire to their true nature. May all beings be free. It's beautiful, very simple, not very complex. But we have to be what we were brought up to be. This mind cannot shake off what it's not meant to shake off. You see, the ego apparently is um, the culprit, you see. But we have to accept the culprit. Sometimes we have to uh, accept the things that we, our body doesn't like, you know, illness, suffering, pain. It's part of life, you know, it's part of this, this, uh, this venture. So for some it's an adventure, but some it's just a, a venturing, you know. Um, we use the words to explore our minds. We, the minds explore the words, and the words explore the meaning, and the meaning explores the, the story, the intent, the the possibilities of this infinite mind. And I feel this seat is collapsing. <laughs> it's maybe time. <laughs> it's maybe time to. Um, <laughs> Give up the throne, you know. <laughs> Give up the front seat.
of the roller coaster ride again. You see, when I was young, I would love stories, you know. Whether whether they were a television story, whether they were uh, an old relative sitting on you on his knee and telling him this, telling you this amazing, fantastical, obviously impossible story about the adventures. Fantasy, you see. And I realized that this life was fantastic with the story. The story is not necessary when you understand uh, God, when you understand consciousness. But it's taking place, you see. So you fit in. You begin to accept life in any in every way for what it is. And I looked at my paintings. I, I have been a painter for, not a real proper professional painter, but um, I've been painting since I was 11. I was looking at some of the old paintings. I seem to have been painting forever. <laughs> and what's a common theme is uh, a full of narrative full of expressive gestures, humour, irony, satirical, all engrossed in one image. It's like when you read a book, there's a process of reading it from the beginning to the end. And there's a slow transition where the emotional, exper emotional sensory experiences are exposed. Where you find yourself laughing, crying on the edge of your seat, and then the end comes. So the painting is like one book and one experience in one one moment, one gesture, one way, one opportunity. If you leave it till tomorrow, there's another chapter. But the need to tell stories is maybe something that, you know, this consciousness enjoys. It maybe sits and like, reads a book at night before it goes to sleep, wants to know about what's going on in the world based on a mind concept, a mind, a mind idea, a mind's creativity. So, But what you find is uh, the story can be judged, the story can be analysed, the story can be measured, it can be praised, it can be ridiculed. So you're putting yourself into the um, into the ring where the gladiator meets the, the Roman or the tiger and there's a fight at the end, you know. But when you accept things for what they are, when you accept it's just a story, all of this is a story from mind. Mind's creating a dream that it wants to make real. This is a dream becoming real. And the reality is when you understand the dream has a possibility to become real. And then you're excused from the dream. And you're allowed to participate in the reality of what is. What is, is expansive. It is whole. It is all states of being. In all ways. Always. Infinite. Ongoing reality. Maybe trans, transcending into something further than reality, you know. If you go beyond consciousness for that one moment, you'll see. Reality is expansive in so many, in so many dimensions, in so many ways, in so many states of consciousness. But the story is a reflection from the mind of what it thinks is taking place. Thinks. And the thoughts can become real, and the real reality is they can become actions. And we're all able to take action to our thoughts. The action of war is horrendous. The action of killing another human being is horrendous. The action of, of you know, 
causing harm to yourself or to some other. The, the action of, of imposing cruelty or verbal abuse or verbal um, um, misconduct, you could call it. Is that the reality that we want? Is that the reality that we need? So the story is simple. The story is basic. The story is me, I, here. Taking on board whatever comes. Hoping that every being will be happy. Every being is free. Knowing that freedom is just a thought away. Remove the thought I am. Move into the I of God. It's not a place, it's everywhereness, it's emptiness, it's nothingness, it's profound, it's tranquil, it's here, it's now. We have the opportunity to, to, to live as a person, as a man, as a name, as an identity, as a title. But we also have the opportunity to realize that everyone is the same. Everyone is the same title, I. But that's the trick of God. I'm making them all the same. Let's see how they deal with it. And they, they create individual names to force division, to force conflict, to force wars to force breaking her down and creating breaking down and then creating breaking down and then creating oh, this is the samsara of life you see if you give a human being you know all the tools he needs to create home and they will do it but you don't give them anything more. You don't give them the entitlement to create castles and mosques and cinemas, all that stuff. A home is all we need. Each one will be happy. Each one will be the same. Each one will not be pushing into directions where the mind wants the thoughts to create a real fantastical situation that consciousness will be seen as a real a reality that one day science will break through and understand where we came from that our God will be greater than their God the Hindu God is greater than the Muslim God the Muslim God is greater than the Christian God the Christian God is greater than the Catholic God these are fictitious thoughts, but they're okay, you see. You know, these are okay because if each individual wants to follow something, they have the right to follow that thing. If it's greed, they have the right. They are following their thoughts, making them real. They make greed real. We make all the words and titles and names real forms. We turn them into something concrete, something substantial and unfortunately we tread over each other to do this we we feel, fail to see the value of each individual we fail to see the, the tramp on the street as just as great as the king or the president we fail to see these things but it's our mind that fails to see deep in our being we know we know when you start thinking from the horror you know you know that God is unknown and you know that that knowing is the greatest knowing because the unknown is vast the unknown holds so many possibilities so many lives so many opportunities until it's known what can know it you see what can know it? Remove the names, remove the title, 
and remove that all-encompassing title of I and say I am here but where is I that is here who is I that is here and who is witnessing that what wants to know what I is you see what is the witness of I what observes I who can discover that I that I believe I am who is who and the who am I says Papaji Jiddu Krishnamurti wants to remove the one that listens to become the one that sees the listening that becomes the listening Ramana Maharshi Nati Nati Neti Neti not this, not this, removes everything. Yes, we are hypnotized into this world, into this mind. Yes, we are hypnotized into programming the culture of, of our past and our probable futures. Yes, we will remain as humans. Yes, we will remain as ego. <laughs> but to see beyond ego, beyond the remnants of what we have created, is to see the truth of that that is. I want to leave you with that that it is. And tell my own story to myself. Because when you start sharing stories, you become engulfed with just stories. And these stories stop you from going within. These stories say there's something okay, don't bother today, there's a better story tomorrow and a better story the next week, and a better story. Um, so, it's maybe time to stop sharing <laughs> the stories. Uh, I'm off to celebrate my, my um, granddaughter's birthday. Um, and you'll find that the people around you, once you know the truth, about the simple things in life or the greatest things around you. Life is great. Life is happy. Life is content. Life is being. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about life. Are you life? Are you beyond life? Are you after life? Are you this life? Are you the next life? No, you're all encompassing life. A mirror. The story is a mirror, the mind is a mirror, consciousness is a mirror, one whole mirror reflecting the truth that all is okay, as it is. Namaste. Om.